Hi everyone, my name is Kin and in this presentation I will give a brief introduction to autoencoders. An autoencoder tries to learn the approximation to the identity function in an unsupervised manner so as to output a reconstruction that is similar to its input. By unsupervised, we mean that only the data is available without any training labels and we are attempting to extract interesting features or structures to it. At first glance, the identity function is trivial to them. However, by placing constraints on the network, such as by limiting the number of hidden units, we can discover interesting structure about the data. As a concrete example, suppose we have a 10 by 10 pixel image as the input, meaning that we have 100 input units, but we only have 50 hidden units. Therefore, we are forcing the network to learn a compressed representation of the input given only the vector of hidden unit activations in order to reconstruct the 100 unit output. If the inputs are IID random, learning the structures would be difficult. However, in reality, all data are not random and the input's features are often correlated. This algorithm will be able to discover these correlations. In fact, a simple autoencoder often ends up learning a low-dimensional representation, very similar to principal component analysis, or PCAs. Autoencoders can be stacked to get a deep autoencoder network, as we will discuss later. Because of the depth, it is often much more powerful than PCA. There is no requirement on using a small number of hidden units. Even if we use a lot of hidden units, we can still implement sparsity constraints to force learning. Let's directly move on to denoising autoencoders to understand how autoencoders work. Basically, denoising autoencoders are similar to regular autoencoders, but in this case we randomly corrupt the input by pretending some of the input units are zero in order to allow a more robust feature learning. We begin with x our original input vector. The input vector is randomly corrupted where some inputs are set to zero to get x bar. The autoencoder tries to map x bar to y via model parameter theta, and the model attempts to reconstruct the output z from the transpose of theta. This reconstructed vector is then compared with our original input vector to obtain a loss, where the error is back propagated to fine tune the weights and biases which are represented by the parameter theta. As mentioned before, autoencoders can be stacked. For each additional layer, we are increasing the modeling capacity because the model is now learning the features of features. However, random initialization model of model weights will be troublesome. For these, we perform layer-wise pre-training, where the training algorithm is performed in a greedy layer-wise manner. During training, the loss that we are trying to minimize can be represented by this equation, which is the sum of the reconstructed error, the sparsity term, and the regularization term. Reconstruction error is simply the mean squared error between the reconstructed uh, reconstruction and the input. The sparsity term forces most of the hidden layer weights to be zero, whereas the regularization term forces the hidden layer weights to be small. Both the sparsity term and regularization are measures to combat, combat the problem of overfitting and to ensure that the model generalizes the data well. After training the first layer, the second layer is trained with the same procedure. The first layer weights are kept constant in this case. And then we train the third layer. Once we train all the layers, we get a model that looks like that. Note that the figure here shows that each layer having the same number of hidden units. But in reality, we can use progressively smaller number of hidden units to encode information or as a means of dimension reduction, then perform decoding in a higher level. Let's move on to the next slide to see what we mean by decoding in a higher up level. First, let's show, that, uh, show the compressed version of the same figure. Now, the, the smallest layer at the top is the code layer, where important features for the data are captured. Since this code layer is in a different dimension from the input, we would like to restore dimensions in the re reconstructed version. To achieve this, we simply take the transpose of each hidden layer parameters of the encoder to form the decoder shown by this in, uh, animation. Now we have a nicely initialized hidden layer weight. In summary, the encoder hierarchical re hierarchically reduces the dimensions while capturing important features. The code layer holds all the information to reconstruct the output. The decoder restores the vectors from the code into the same dimension as the input. 
frequently we res restore the dimensions in image processing applications such as in image denoising and image deblurring. However, for classification problems, it is usually sufficient to stop at the code layer. This slide compares the performance between regular autoencoders with denoising autoencoders. One popular problem is to classify images of digits. When using regular autoencoders, we see that the features learned are mostly noisy. But if we were to use denoising autoencoders, the learned features become more prominent. In one of our works, we applied stack denoising autoencoders in enhancing low light images. The architecture that we use is similar to what we have discussed earlier, where the input is the low light photographs and the output is the enhanced images. When training the model, we feed synthetically darkened and noise added image patches into the model. The model will learn the ways to produce a reconstructed image, which will then be compared with the original images. The error is backpropagated to fine-tune the model parameters, and with enough iterations, we arrive at a trained model. Then we feed a low-lag test image to obtain an enhanced test image. Because natural low-lag training data is limited, we train the model using synthetically darkened and noise-added images. To demonstrate the notion of transfer learning, we train the model with synthetic images but applied it on natural low-lag images. Here's what we got from our algorithm, which actually looks pretty good, I think, especially for this uh, picture of grasses and trees right here in the third row. The gist that we would like to emphasize, and it may be relevant to other domains, is that uh, we can train a model using synthetic dataset by injecting artificial anomaly, for example, and then apply it on real data to solve the problems we are interested in. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.